All right, good evening. Uh, today is uh, August the 30th, 2012. I have on the um, line with me here today um, Bill Cimbrello, and he is running for the U.S. Senate in um, Massachusetts. And uh, so it's great to talk to him. And he, he's not, um, you know, you'd expect, uh, you'd probably say, well, is he a Republican or a Democrat? Um, well, you know what? There are other options besides just um, R's and D's, um, and they've been around for a while, but uh, he's actually um, uh, an independent, and um, it's him against uh, them and, and someone in the um, co Communist Party, I, I believe, to be, uh, to be honest here. But um, so if, if you don't know all your uh, options, you know, how, how can you make a fully informed decision? And um, and so, you, you know, actually, Bill, I'm looking on a couple of websites here, and, and they do mention you in there. And, and then there's like one or, one or two that, that didn't even, you know, they just, like it, Wikipedia, it only lists uh, Scott Brown and Elizabeth Warren. Um, I, mean, I mean, is that, um, I, what, what, why would someone do something like that? So I guess they're just uh, misinformed or something, or? Well, uh, first of all, thank you, Tom, uh, for uh, having me here tonight. It's, uh, um uh, I'm very grateful for that and the opportunity. Um, uh, what uh, it, um, what um, what I think we're, we're we're dealing with here is is really um, uh, the the impact that moneyed interests uh, are having on our electoral process. And um, um, you mentioned Wikipedia, and, and and if you look on the right site for Wikipedia, I do actually appear. I think if you if you look for um, if you type U.S. Senate race, and on that particular page, I think it does. I do actually appear as an independent there. Uh, but you're right. Um, uh, there has been little to no play in the media uh, representing uh, what, what I'm doing, despite the fact that um, um, even now I probably have the most job creation ideas. Uh, combined uh, with my two opponents, uh, Scott Brown and Elizabeth Warren. It, it seems like um, there's a lot of that going around, though. A, a lot of, like, um, misrepresentation, underrepresentation, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it seems like, uh, it, it, I guess that's what happens when people don't turn out to vote. But, um, I mean, there was a high turnout, you, you know, uh, in 2008. Maybe there will be even more this year because that's one thing we still have to pull that lever or, you, you know, vote on that electronic screen and, and, and put in our votes, you know? Well, you're exactly right. I, I saw a, um, a, um, a um, Wall Street occupier holding a sign that said, apathy is a weapon of mass destruction. Yeah, ap apathy, fear, and distraction, and um, and uh, w well, it's imagine. I mean, what wh what do you think? Um, like uh, I, I guess a, a Bill um, Sombrello um, senatorial six years would be like. Uh, well, um, first of all, let me let me say uh, at the top of this, um, you mentioned the six years. One of the things I've recently um, made public is that uh, if I were elected, I would serve only two terms. Okay. Um, I feel that that um, is an indicator of, of, uh, to the people that I, I'm not. I'm really not looking to make a career career out of this. Um, the reason I got into this. Excuse me. One second. Let me take a glass of water. Yeah. Water <coughs> me. Yeah. We all need water. <coughs> Pardon me. Sorry. Um, what um, uh, the, the, the reason I, I, I say that is because I want people to be absolutely clear that my motivations here are not to make a, 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 a life-changing move. You're not doing this for yourself, right? So, I mean... Uh, no, and, and that's the whole point. You know, I, I got into this um, out, of, out of frustration, out of wanting to protect um, our nation's future for, for my kids, for your kids, and all the kids that are coming. Uh, because what I see is not good. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm very frustrated with, with the uh, government ineptitude and the injustices and the inequalities that we see every day. And um, my six years uh, uh, would, would be towards eradicating all that in every way possible. Um, and one of the biggest problems is you, you let off with 
is that we have a, a very, very twisted system in terms of uh, letting, letting people know who's in the running um, early enough in the process. I mean, the journalists, um, they're smart enough. I mean, I'm sure they've done their research. I mean, Wikipedia, who knows? It could have been some 15-year-old who did that. But, I mean, but, the, you know, the mainstream media, um, y y you know. So when's the debates going to be? I can't wait to see you in the debates. Well, you bring up an excellent point. Let me, let me, let me backtrack a little bit here. Uh, my campaign failed to secure the necessary 10,000 signatures to get on the ballot. So at this point, we are running a write-in sticker campaign, which is within the guidelines of the Massachusetts uh, um, uh, Secretary of the, of the Commonwealth. So um, that, that is what we're doing. There is a long history of winning writing campaigns uh, with, with, a, with a long list of, of, of who's who's. And um, so people should not um, look upon that, uh, look, look down their noses upon that as, as uh, a no-win situation because that is not the case at all. And in fact, uh, I'm hopeful that uh, more interviews such as this, um, um, I just had, had another one earlier today, uh, will eventually uh, force mainstream media to, to take a good hard look and, and put me out there uh, along with the other candidates. Well, so at this, at this point, yeah. I'm well, not invited. Well, let's see where you are on the issues. I mean, that's the most important thing, right? Um, sure. I mean, so what's, um, what's uh, like... Um, what what didn't you see like what was missing like what are you gonna like um, what's the ingredients that you can add to the to the Congress to the national US Congress um, uh, that, that you would bring that um, you, you, you know it's there's something missing there I mean there's for sure is something missing there, there's a lot missing and, and I think uh, the, the key component that's missing is the interest of the majority of Americans um, yeah, and Congress. I don't just say that because I mean the Gallup poll just had a you, you know a, a recent um, uh, polling that was on August 24th, and Congress had a 10 percent approval rating. I'm surprised it was that high, frankly. Um, you know, w w one of the things that uh, um, uh, is one of the greatest inequities here is that we have. Um, uh, 535 congressmen between uh, both houses um, of, of Capitol Hill, uh, both chambers of Capitol Hill, and these people are working uh, not for our interests, but really for the interests of, of the six percent. I won't say the the one percent because you have to include the six percent who are uh, really uh, own 70 percent of of the nation's assets, and um, they do this. Uh, they, they have written policies both. Uh, domestic and foreign that protect those interests instead of the greater good and 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 that that's been their driving force they instead of doing long-term solutions that will benefit uh, uh, the greater good of America they're doing band-aid fixes to get them through the next election and we have got to stop doing that as a nation and and again that's part of the reason I, I say you know I, I'm gonna do two terms and um, you know, if I'm not doing a great job by the end of the, uh, end of the first term, the people are going to let me know it, and, and, and I'm happy to step down, and I'll help whoever wants to replace me it, to that degree. I, I, I just, the idea here is to help America get through this, and uh, President Obama talks about going forward. Well, I'm really talking about going forward. One of the things that, that distinguishes me here between um, my two opponents, uh, the incumbent Scott Brown and um, uh, the Democrat Elizabeth Warren, is, is that um, I have real solutions to real problems, some of them actually proven in the real world. And, and, and none of them can stay, uh, say that unequivocally. Yes, Elizabeth Warren talks about um, using an FDR type of approach to, to solving our nation's ills by putting everyone to yeah, work. Yeah, that's a good description. She kind of has an uh, FDR-ish kind of approach. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But let me ask you, let me, let me just say this. That approach worked for FDR, but we are a very, very different nation today than we were when FDR was in office. We d FDR was not dealing with unregulated and uncontrolled outsourcing. FDR was not uh, dealing with unregulated and uncontrolled, quote-unquote, 
free trade, and all of these things. Well, some people are, could argue. He, I mean, I, I mean, there's there's a lot more going on nowadays. I mean, there wasn't the military-industrial complex. Um, you, you know, we had a gold standard. Um, there was a, yeah, a lot was different then. You know, I mean, but he did face some tough things. I don't want to say that, you know, he was like, you know, a wimp or anything. Yeah, I mean, he's FDR, you know, fear, you have nothing to fear but fear itself, you know. So. Oh, no, don't get me wrong. Uh, uh, FDR was the right man uh, doing the right thing at the right time. The, 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 m again, my point is, is that those I mean, solutions... everyone is open at criticism. Anyways, yeah, but, but I, I hear, like, there's, you sense more of an urgency, I think, um, as, as far as, like, how the State of the Union is. Oh, a absolutely. I think this 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 election and and where we are going forward from now, uh, I think the nation is at a critical juncture. Um, the window of opportunity for voters to really have a voice is closing and closing rapidly. When you look at how moneyed interests are playing into the 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 election process, and so. Uh, one of the things, things that, that, that I've been advocating is, is a, a real turnover here in, in the U.S. Congress. Every two years, 87 yeah. percent of well, Congress is, is up for yeah, election. Yeah, we, we, we've, we've had them turn over like we've, we've, it's gone back and forth from a Democrat to Republican Congress to Democrat co Congress to Republican Congress. And then, you know what? Pretty soon, people are going to wake up. And then all of a sudden, it's going to go swing one way it never has before: independence and and, and, and or third party possibly. And um, and it almost did that with Ross Perot. I mean, that was a presidential election. But we're probably. I mean, there's Gary Johnson, there's Jill Stein, yes. Um, and and and, and there's um, it, there's what happens when we vote for the lesser of two evils too many times in a row. You end up with. Obamni and, um, and and they're both the same candidates, like uh, almost um, t you know looking in the mirror in a sense. Um, and uh, and so sorry if you're a Romney fan, but um, you know being Massachusetts, but but it, it's it's you know what we could do have is is you know make ha history on on November seventh uh, and and have um, a wave of I don't know how big the wave could be or or but but a wave for sure of independent third party candidates that that aren't Republicans or Democrats um, that would have to get uh, media attention or, or you, you know they'll I mean we have like two right now imagine you know them in like double digit numbers right um, well you know I'm I'm uh, I'm fighting that battle um, I think I would be a tremendous ally to uh, Bernie Sanders uh, senator of, of Vermont. Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, he's an independent, um, I, uh, politically had aligned myself, aligned myself with him, uh, quite a bit, uh, politically I also aligned myself, uh, quite a bit, uh, with, uh, Dennis Kucinich, who unfortunately lost, uh, his primary bid, and, um, um, he, he's out of it. Yeah, uh, I was a fan uh, of his, now. I'm also a fan of Ron Paul, I mean, I like, you, you know, anyone who's, you know, sticking by their principles, stand up for their constitution, and um, wanting to get to the root of the problem. Um, right. And, uh, well, um, it, it's, so, so, I guess your motivation is, um, is because, uh, you, you, you know, I, I mean, you see the country as uh, the constitution, the declaration of independence, that spirit of the of the Constitution, and um, and so I, so some more issues. I, I, I guess um, I, I mean that that's that's an issue itself. Like, what are you going to do there? Um, and, uh, and and so so that makes sense. Like, what about um, taxes? Like, taxes are an important. Um, you know, everything starts, I guess, with taxes. I mean, uh, so what, what what's your thoughts on taxes? Status quo or something totally different? Oh no, we, we, we need to move uh, forward uh, from that. Uh, if you go to my website, I'm actually a proponent of a uh, value-added tax. But I think for the country to, to, to put that in place it is, we're, we're, if, if that were to happen, I, I think we're just too far off from that from well, a practical standpoint. Well, do you think value-added tax with an income tax or replacing an income tax? Instead of replacing, Instead of, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely yeah. had to replace it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like the fair tax. You know what? Imagine this. I mean, for just for a second, I know there's people that like to argue against it, saying it's going to hurt the poor. But I mean, there could be vouchers, and there could also prices would end up. It'd probably take about a year or something, but they would stabilize, I think. And imagine like we'd be the only country in the entire world 
that didn't have an income tax, and but we had a value-added tax, which means everyone from immigrants, illegal immigrants, or, or whatever, to um, tourists, um, corporations, they would all have to pay it because it would be in their purchases, and um, and they would all flock here. I think. Um, I mean, uh, it's uh, it, that's kind of you, you know a, a, that would be a big revolutionary step. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the thing is that uh, people talk about balancing the budget um, as a standalone uh, uh, item, and you know, you, if you're trying to talk about balancing the budget, you can't talk about uh, you can't talk about it unless you're talking about job creation. It, it, you know, if you do that, it's like waiting at a train station. Uh, for a taxi, you're going to be waiting a very long time. The taxi. Well, what, our down. budget is mostly what it's 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 Medicare and Social Security. Social Security has its own trust fund. We, you know, but Medicare and um and and the military spending and um and that's the big parts of it. So what what do you think about that? Well, I, I think that uh, there's a couple of scenarios I, I have in mind for uh, defense spending. Um, out of the gate, I feel that defense spending should be cut 50%. Um, if that is not doable, uh, what would or, that be like? That would be like 1999 levels or something like that, or 2001 levels, I think. Uh, I think you're in the right ballpark. Yep. Yeah. yeah so it's um, not really that you know crazy or anything like that. So. No, not considering uh, to where we what we've escalated to. Not at all. But, I mean, if someone's thinking that, because um, I mean that's you know probably and we were still spending more than everyone you know at that time. So. Right, but I also have a carrot here, um, and, and, and that's this. Um, we have a situation where, where uh, members of the House of Representatives, their job is to go to Congress um, year after year and hold out their hand to get uh, federal monies or projects, defense contracts, whatever it is, to bring back home so they look like the heroes um, that they need to be to win the yeah, uh, election. I, think, I, don't, I think, I mean, pe people in their hearts know that i mean you know I'm, I'm as much of a strong defense as anyone else and you know and um but um i, I mean our budgets as a lot of people say is one of our national security issues and i think people know that's the right thing to do i don't think you'll hear i don't know i mean the other candidates or not many people at all until we get a new wave i mean 50 percent uh, military budget that's standing up to special interests um, and uh, that the same special interests that President uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower warned of uh, warned us of in his farewell speech. Right. If, if you look at history here, the recent history, in fact, um, the F-22 Raptor um, uh, aircraft was was actually uh, um, assembled in, in factories in 46 different states. Uh, components of it. And then the final assembly, uh, I can't tell you offhand where it was. The result of the, the, the intent was to get um, all these uh, congressmen to say, hey, we love, we love this project. We'd like to have it in, in, our, in our state. And, and, um, and it got ran through uh, the political process. But by divvying it up uh, among 46 states, um, uh, an aircraft that would have uh, initially uh, priced out um, at 180 million each ended up being around 460 million each, uh, give or take. And so uh, we have tremendous cost overruns because they, again, they, they they were trying to finagle a way to, to make this thing happen. And, and as I said, the, the carrot I was getting at is this, um, and and this allows these congressmen to still come home with with, with a winning solution. Um, let's retool our defense contractors for green sustainable energy projects. Let's retool them for... Yeah, they, uh, they could make like marvelous kinds of, um, you know, devices and, and maybe even outer space a little bit too. Uh, there's the, the, the options are limitless. Um, but, but they, let's things use things so that are constructive instead of destructive, basically. Exactly right, Thomas. Uh, you know, uh, let's, let's use some, some, some of those, those billions of R&D dollars um, that, that have been spent to, to make uh, white microwave weapons. Let's spend th that money instead on um, building a reliable, low radiation uh, fusion reactor, and, and, and then we can, we, can, um, we can close the fission reactor plants 
um, and sell fusion technology to other countries around the world before somebody else discovers that technology and how to, how to do it, and, and then we end up being the customer. There's, there's a lot of possibilities there, and, and, and there's, just, there's just no vision in the country to do that. You remember uh, uh, John F. Kennedy, he's the one that, that gave us the vision to put a man on the moon by, by, the, uh, by the end of, uh, of the 60s, and we did it in 1969, and unfortunately Neil Armstrong uh, just passed away this this week, um, but um, but you know here, here's a, a America's great achievement, and we have had no leader come out and 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 do that since. Now recently, uh, in fact, in the last two days, I, I believe President Obama uh, signed uh, into law um, something that uh, by uh, by 2025 vehicles have to have, I believe, uh, 54 M a 54 mpg uh, highway. And that's a great move in the, in the right direction. I, I think 2025 is too far out. I think that's, um, that was done largely, I think, in, in, in part to appease the, the petroleum industry. I don't think we, we should yeah, do I that. Yeah, Carter said by, like, 1980, like we would, like, be off of oil or something like that, you know, when they make these right. far out, like, you know, five-year plans or whatever, yeah. Right, and and the risk, of course, is that you get a person like Romney, and 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 the first day in office, he, he gets out his red pen, and and all these these uh, well-meaning uh, moves just go right uh, in, into the uh, the trash can. So, uh, you know, that that's one area where where I think we can move the. Well, what about uh, transparency in governments? I mean, do you think um like um I, I do you think it's it's a good way to uh, for government to like who watches a watchman? A good way for because I mean all these agencies are getting so much control now, like the TSA and and all these groups, um, and they don't need to, you, you know, get a warrant. They can just sometimes write them themselves, and, and, and you know, and, and then the whistleblowers are threatened, journalists are threatened. I mean, that's supposed to be the fourth branch of government is uh, journalism and, um, and the media, um, and they're supposed to follow up and ask, you know, hard questions. And uh, so well, what's your uh, take on that? I mean, more in the civil liberties um, arena, uh, that, um, that there's a lot of... Uh, going on in that arena right now, I believe. Well, we, we've uh, been on a slippery slope since the uh, Bush administration uh, with the Patriot Act. Uh, we now have um, NDAA uh, and uh, President Obama, um, who unfortunately in many respects I, I call GOP light, um, is, uh, is, is trying hard to, uh, to uh, put back indefinite detention. Uh, these are all problems. We, we have a, um, an FAA bill. Um, recently that was signed, I, I, I can't remember uh, uh, exactly what the bill number was, um, but that bill allowed uh, drones in U.S. airspace. So uh, the country is moving in the wrong direction. Um, we have 5% of the, approximately of the, of the world's population, yet we have 25% of the world's incarcerated population. Yeah, no, that's um, crazy. That, that is, I've read that a couple places, yeah. We have a higher per capita and higher um, actual population than uh, I think any country in the world, actually. Um, that's that's correct. And 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 is, for, is it because we're more evil than everyone else? I mean, no, I, I don't think that. I don't think so at all. I think we have archaic laws. I think we have a we have a legal system that. Um, uh, is relying on, on a, uh, you know, without anybody coming out and saying it, they need a certain amount of illegality all, all to keep going. All these lawyers have to keep going. We have now uh, for-profit prisons. Yeah, we have, no, we have uh, private prisons now, and, uh, right. and that can be traded on in the stock market, so. Right, so, you know, what message is that sending? Is, 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 you know, are we really out to eradicate um, um, uh, problems? Or are we just out there to, to keep a certain low-level hum going all this time so, so people can line their pockets? Yeah, and you problem. know, a lot of people might not know, but, I mean, they hire those um, private prisoners, the prisoners, I mean, for, like, and they pay them, like, pennies on the dollar, and they take jobs as well, you know? Um, that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a wrong uh, profit motive there. I mean, that's... that's um, you know, just as bad as quotas, you know, um, it, it, it's, uh, but, uh, well, what about, um, I, I mean, uh, Massachusetts, what about health care? I, 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 what, what do you think about health care? What do you think about Massachusetts? It's health care. What do you think about, um, you know, the National Affordable Health Care Act or whatever it's called? 
Well, most people call it uh, Obamacare, Obamacare, right? Obamacare, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I don't know if um, people know this or not. Um, Romney did give us here uh, the uh, uh, his Romney care version when he was uh, governor. Uh, what he failed to do is figure out a way to pay for it. Um, and he, you know, he, he jumped ship uh, pretty much uh, uh, before, before he figured that out. And uh, it's very simple to, to put a plan in place like that, but if you don't figure out how to uh, cross the T's and dot the I's, it, it's problematic. Well, Howard Dean said for Vermont he could construct one where it wouldn't even require a mandate, you know. Um, I don't know how he did it, but he doesn't seem someone too loose with the figures or anything. Well, I, I'm a strong proponent of, of um, single-payer expanded uh, Medicare. I, I think that um, private insurance companies, um, just like your employer, should have zero to do with um, anyone's private health business. Do you think there should be uh, a, um, a variable based on income as far as the deductible goes to keep costs down a little bit? Well, I... Um, Yes and no. I, you know, there there are going to be people that that uh, just as, as there are now that cannot afford um, uh, Obamacare, and at least in Massachusetts, um, those people do qualify if they don't meet certain income guidelines. But it probably and could so, pay for itself. I mean, do you can do you think it could pay for itself? I guess that's the main thing. If it could, then yeah, it yes, I I absolutely do. Um, you know, there's. Uh, the insurance industry uses what are called actuaries to figure out um, tables for, for, for paying uh, premiums and all, and all that based on, on, uh, on losses, et cetera. So uh, if you look at the, the raw data, um, when, you, when you look at Medicare, uh, including senior citizens, including those that have to be on it, um, and, and, and generally speaking, obviously, that segment of the population is going to be taxing the system more so than, say, um, uh, kids in college that are, are, are less in need of that. So if you incorporate all the young and the old, all the sick, all the healthy into expanded Medicare, you're going to have a program that works. And it'll work to the tune of uh, estimates that I've seen of somewhere around the neighborhood of $100 to $150 per person, maybe $300 per family. That is very, very affordable for most of the nation. And it's doable, but we just got to cut out the middleman. And that middleman is private insurance. And I, and I propose um, a five-year phase-out of having private insurance um, or, I mean, be, if they be, be the middleman. Compete they could you know they could still do it if they wanted if they could still compete right like they would be opposed to that I, I wouldn't be opposed to it but you're never going to see the premiums that I just alluded to you're, you're never going to you know everything all the studies I've seen and these are studies done by well they might offer like catastrophic or something like that or you, you know but you're right you're right it would you, you know is if it could pay for itself and here's another thing is businesses um, like I mean one of the major costs for um, businesses uh, you know paying health care and competing with companies across the world that that don't and um, you, you know, so it actually could be um, a lot of businesses could, you, you know, find not, some of them, like the insurance companies might not find it a good idea. But I, I bet like about 95 percent of businesses out there or more um, probably would um, think that that would be a profit to them. Right, and, and and the thing is, this is that this is why I'm proposing a five-year phase-in approach, where you where you, where you do approximately, you know, it would have to be population-based, but or, you know, for for round numbers, let's say ten state ten states a year would be phased into this over the course of five five years. California, of course, would have to <laughs> maybe stand on its own because it's uh, almost uh, a country on its own over there. But the the other the other component of that is if if you've got workers that are not married to their job. Be for the, own, for the sole purpose oh, totally. of having health, totally. health insurance, yeah. that opens up all kinds of entrepreneurial possibilities for people and startups right. that can happen. Because now people are saying, I don't have to, I don't have to be stuck here doing something I don't want to do. That's an excellent do. reason. I mean, why should healthcare be like tied up to someone's job? You know, that it doesn't shouldn't. make any sense at all. It shouldn't. And that's what's wrong with the whole thing that we're, you, you know, in right now. I, I mean, and and. Um, so, uh, they if I could, Thomas, if I could just take that one step further, the, 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 in, in Massachusetts, 
Um, and, and, and we're I, just I, trying I, to put bandages on a thing that needs, to, you know, a whole reworking. Right, right. But in, in Massachusetts, I believe the cutoff um, where a company has to have um, health insurance for its employees is, I believe, around 25 employees. I could be wrong. Um, but, but the point well, is, and, is that... Yeah, and a lot of companies were exempt from it, too. Isn't that correct? Um, they got a special waiver. I can't speak to that honestly, but but the point is this: I've, the yeah. what 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 the companies will do and have done is they will hire, let's say, 24 full-time employees, and the other, you know, the next 40 are going to be part-time employees, so they don't get the health insurance. So you know, there's all kinds of ways that 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 companies will will find to get out of that responsibility. It's a big nut. I, I've been... Companies should be backing this. I mean, like, 95% of the companies should say, hey, you, you know, this is in our best interest, and, and people should, too. And, um, and I mean, there shouldn't be any mandates, I don't think. I mean, I think if you're, you know, Amish or whatever, and, and if that's not, you, you know, your type of medicine, then you should, you know, be able to do what you want also. But I think well, most I, people would I, want it, yeah. I agree, and and then you know we get into the issue of of, of uh, uh, birth control and 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 uh, and a woman's rights. Uh, I mean, that's to not do as like so expensive, anyways. I mean, is it really? I mean, if um, you know, I mean, I can. Well, be, well, birth control. No, that's not a bad thing, really. I don't think most people are against birth control nowadays. No, but I'm my point is, abortion. I don't. Yeah. I you know I I I just don't think the government belongs in our personal lives I, at, at all. I think a woman's business is her business. And I think what we do in our bedroom is our is our business, and and I think anything anything that moves us away from that to the point that government is controlling that in any way, shape, or form is is, is well. Here's the thing: I can understand. I, I agree with you, but I can understand this. And it, 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 the just to give you the, some people believe that you know they'll go to hell if if they give uh, money to going to um, uh, uh, an abortion so I mean if, if that's what you believe then I can understand that you know um, so so but, yeah. but, but you know again no one should be telling someone else as long as they're not doing something that is you know already uh, you know illegal no and, and that's the same it. reason why some people you, you, you know um, like protest against paying taxes because our money is going to wars they're killing people and stuff like right. that you know so right. I mean it's a, well, it's a conscious decision you, you, you right. know so yeah um, but you know I, I, we talked about uh, retooling um, you know I, again I, I get back to the issue is that people talks about you know uh, the tax base uh, you can't talk about the. You can't talk about how you're going to fund the budget and the tax base unless you're talking about job creation. Those things are all tied together. Oh, you know what? The healthcare would also reduce bankruptcies. That's another good thing. You know. Yep, that's, that's, that's right. You're exactly right. Um, so you know, I have I have in my uh, 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 on my website. Um, uh, several ideas that you may have seen uh, for job job to help job creation. One is called uh, Free for Three, where the um, uh, during the first three years, um, typically uh, an operation is uh, is the most uh, most vulnerable. But what what this does do is uh, if a c company hires three individuals and, and and pays them at least minimum wage. And and um, which obviously well, they have, they have to, do, to, but yeah. they have to. Uh, but the point is, they hire them for three years. Right. Uh, they have to hire those three people for three years. And if they do that, those same three individuals, um, free for three uh, gives them a, a a free tax ride on everything relating to taxes to those three hires. No social security matching, um, no payroll taxes, um, and, and hopefully. Uh, no uh, workers' comp if that could be uh, well, they, they could, could have be negotiated. To pay, it. Yeah, right. That's right. That's right. Health care and and um, you know what? I, I'm going to introduce. Well, go ahead with your three ideas. So they wouldn't have to pay payroll taxes. You said, and what else? Cur cur no payroll taxes. No no social security matching. Because a lot of people uh, don't know that, but like we like when you look at your check and you see social security taken out and you see Medicare taken out and federal income tax, your employer is matching all of that that you're also paying so yeah so. well he's, he's matching so um and and the, the thing is is that uh in addition to that 
He's paying unemployment insurance for the state. Yeah. He's paying workers' comp. Um, he's he's likely carrying some kind of liability insurance to to make sure that if if if, if you cut your finger, uh, unemployment uh, isn't really that you know horrific, but yeah. It depends on it depends on the industry. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's um, true. I guess. Huh. Okay, because if you have a high turnover industry, um, at least in Massachusetts. Um, your your unemployment uh, insurance payment uh, go, goes up. But for up. three years for, for, for none of that, that sounds like a good deal. I mean, why not have that on the table? I mean, it's not right. hurting anything, you know. That's, right. Yeah, that's right. definitely going to help um, create jobs, I would imagine. Right. Uh, uh, the, the other idea I have is called Lump and Jump, which um, allows a recently uh, unemployed individual who was terminated through no fault of his or her own to go to the unemployment agency and take some training on um, um, doing a business startup, a uh, business plan, SBA loans, etc. And they would receive their unemployment benefit in a lump sum payment. And that would allow them to do their startup dream that they've had, which never they've never had the opportunity to do. Um, and they would get either 13 or 26 weeks of, of, of their unemployment uh, handed to them as a single check. Now, they would have to uh, adhere to certain guidelines to, 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 to get that. Would they have to pay it back, or it's just, um, well, I guess they wouldn't have to pay it back. With no, they would, they would not. The point is is that uh, if you look at... But the point is, know, instead of giving this money to the banks, um, which actually did get trillions of dollars of free money, and, and, and corporate welfare, like, you know, Halliburton getting billions of dollars. I mean, that's why Dick Cheney was a successful business person. I mean, you know, that was probably his first private sector job. And and, and so, like, yeah, it's, it's um, so why not, um, you, you know, pick some uh, uh, regular people instead? Right. So um, the, the other idea is what, what I call VESP, or the uh, Voucher Economic Stimulus Program. And that's, uh, that was actually inspired by a friend, uh, a friend of mine here who owns an um, uh, automotive uh, mechanic uh, and body shop. Um, the idea here is that if you've got somebody that's got uh, unemployment uh, that they're receiving, they would receive a voucher for that unemployment and they would present it to a, a potential employer. And that employer would take the voucher and uh, w uh, upon the authorization of the employee, would receive the full amount remaining on that person's unemployment. Wow. The, okay. The, okay. The employer then would be free to use that money any way they choose. They could use it for advertising, for machinery, for training that employee or now, another employee. In order employee. to do all this, I mean, you have to, what, what do you think about the Federal Reserve? Um, because that's, I mean, um, what do you, that's, I mean, that's who, well, the Congress should be in charge of the purse, but I mean, they spend more money Per, well, in the last couple of years, at least, they had a bigger budget to spend than our own Congress, and they're lending money out all over the world. Well, I think the Federal Reserve should be uh, should be rolled back, uh, or, sh or should be rolled into the Treasury. I, I I don't think it should be. It should have the autonomy that that, that it has. It really has not served. You know, I think North uh, or South Dakota has its own bank, and you know, and I don't think they're like in a real big, as big of a budget crisis as some other states. Right. Um, so Abraham you know, Lincoln did that, and uh, you, you know, um, and uh, it, so yeah. I mean, uh, in full transparency, do you think it? You know, I mean, possibly might have some kind of backing, like a pre um, Bretton Woods agreement or something like that. Or I, I think we absolutely have to have uh, uh, full transparency in, in in Washington, and and that's one of the things I hope hope to bring. You, you know. If I go to Washington, everyone's coming with me, is what I said, <laughs> because because I, you know I think that's what that it's needed, and you know, and that's to Bernie Sanders' credit. That's what he does. That that's what makes him uh, such a great guy, because he he is out there and he's putting a microscope on everything that's going on um, on the Senate side, and we need to do that on, on both houses, uh, both chambers of Congress, and and if elected, one of the things that I will go out of my way to do is to help other free thinkers to come into um, into politics, be it at, at the state uh, or federal level. We have to get free thinkers in. Now, you know, our, our, our nation, 
we've got these these black and white ideologies that are, are, are presented by, by by the left and the right, and and our nation is not made up. Uh, the voters don't don't buy into that. We're not made up of these black and white ideologies. We're we're millions of shades of gray, and and so that that's what has to be the the, the working premise for anything that we're doing um, in our nation's capital. Yeah, it's um, an exciting time, um, and uh, so. Um well, Bill, um, let me ask you this. Do you have any um, favorite past politicians, like past presidents or, or just any governors or whatever? Well, you mentioned, uh, uh, you, you mentioned uh, Abraham Lincoln, and he was definitely uh, a, a past favorite uh, president. I, I think uh, uh, he is unique in what he endured uh, trying to hold America together. And um, and unfortunately, uh, days after uh, after the Civil War ended, he was assassinated. But uh, you know, I I think I think, uh, um, I think he, he he is definitely uh, one of my heroes. And um, you know, in terms of, of present day politicians, um, Ralph Nader uh, comes to mind. Um, I would say uh, John Anderson, going back a few years. I don't know if you remember uh, uh, John Anderson. Um, I think he was an independent that ran for president in 1980. Is that right? So, uh, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And um, and 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 even now, you know, as, as I mentioned, Dennis Kucinich and, and Bernie Sanders um, are are um, are people I I would like to emulate uh, when I when I get there. Yeah, they actually did a Patriot Act by voting against the Patriot Act, and um, and so, well, uh, uh, Bill Cimbrello, um let's see, um, your website is, uh, let's see, um, Bill, um, B-I-L-L, Cimbrello, C-I-M-B-R-E-L-O dot com, and remember how to spell that, B-I-L-L, C-I-M-B-R-E-L, Oh, when you write um, his name in, if uh, you want someone who's going to, um, you, you know, look at cutting the uh, uh, the, the the waste in um, our uh, uh, budgets, and uh, also um, he's going to stand up for civil liberties and uh, really find the um, you know go in there uh, and, and and not uh, play around. Um, and so people need to um, I, I you know contribute um, either in, in in dollars and cents or with time and, and efforts um, uh, if they want to have a uh, y you know this kind of voice heard and and, and representing um, them and uh, so it's been a pleasure Bill it, it's uh, great to um, y you know see the spirits of uh, uh, y you know someone who still believes um, in the Constitution and and, and that um, that uh, y you know our American ingenuity can uh, rise to the occasion uh, that we're in right now, and um, and look to the better sides of us, and uh, and say, hey, you know what, things can turn around. We just have to uh, take some um, assertive action, and uh, well, I guess this year, November 7, 2012, votes, um, and that'll be one way to do it. Um, well, don't don't vote on the seventh. You'll be I mean, a on November late. It's just a six. Six. <laughs> right, right. It's, the headlines will say on the seventh that there's a lot. <laughs> imagine a lot of independents and uh, third-party candidates in the House. Um, I think that would be uh, pretty uh, good. Um, well, Bill, I'll say goodbye to you um, r right after here, but uh, thanks for your time and, um, and, and your efforts, and uh, so hopefully people will um, uh, reciprocate that and, uh, and y y you know, I guess have the, um, uh, know, know all their options and have the self-esteem to stand up uh, for what they know is right. Thank you again, uh, Thomas, for the opportunity, and uh, um, I, I look forward to... Uh to uh, a, a good election cycle here and, and some big changes ahead. Absolutely. Thanks. All right. So, um, you, you know, I, 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 I thought I might have heard an encore, um, but uh, actually we didn't cover all the issues, and uh, this would be a perfect time and place to do that. So, Bill, um, there are actually some other issues um, that, um, that, that, that you'd like to present here, and I'm glad that you brought this up. So, um, uh, you were mentioning um, uh, worker-owned um, cooperatives as a uh, uh, potential way for people to um, produce um, in the future or something like that, right? 
Well, yes. Uh, well, it, it, it's happening now. Um, uh, the history for cooperatives, uh, uh, it goes back. I do have a thought on that, too, but go ahead. Yeah, I'd love to hear sure. this. Yeah, yeah um, a Mondragon Corporation was established in 1957 in the northern Basque region of Spain and currently has about 90,000 worker owners um, that make up about 256 business subunits. Um, they're one of the most well-known and most successful um, cooperatives in the world. Um, That's they, not illegal to do that, right? So, I mean, how would you encourage that? Because, I mean, keep explaining what they do. I mean, explain the benefits sure. of it. I, I, I'm just starting to get a picture, but I don't have the full details yet. Sure. Ba basically, as, as the name implies, we're, I mean, worker owners are exactly that. And in the Mondragon model, these worker owners have actually bought into uh, being partners, if you will, uh, into this cooperative, and they Mondragon has a number. Well, they of ways can leave that, anytime they want, right? That's correct, and they can, they can leave with this their thing. with their investment with them. No, they. <laughs> but oh, well, <laughs> so um, and, and the point is is that they invest into the company. They now have a vested interest. It gives them the pride of ownership. It gives them a say. It gives. It provides social democracy in the workplace. And here's a really neat thing about it, um, among a lot of it, but one of the neat things about it is the highest wage earner in Mondragon makes nine times what the lowest wage earner is. Now, you look at the U.S. model, and we're looking at, you know, what, 350-fold uh, difference, give or take, and, and, we're, and we're talking about this is a successful yeah. company that has... It's like comparing a galaxy to the solar system. Uh, yeah, exactly. And what they do is part of their part of their model is they give back 10% of their profits annually to the community. They have one of the best universities in Spain, in fact, in the world. People come from all over the world to attend um, uh, Mondragon University, which costs the equivalent in, in about, th I think, $300 a, a year to go to. So. You know, they they have. Yeah, why not? Why? I mean, I mean, not everyone's going to do that. But you know what? I mean, that I could imagine a lot of that going around and being successful for sure. Well, well, it, it's made its way uh, to the United States. The United States currently has uh, approximately thirty thousand uh, worker on cooperatives. Not to scare away the loners. I mean, you can still be your loner self. I mean, you, you know, and sometimes I'm kind of a loner myself. But but I can see this working. So yeah, that's. Uh, Cool. Well, it's, it's, it's sharing the risk, uh, but also sharing the reward, and it, you know, it takes out the middleman. Uh, you don't have the, 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 in a case like that, you don't really have a lot of layers of middle management because do, 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 if, if you're a worker owner, do you need really to be policed that much? You're going to do the right thing because this is your company too, point. right? That's a good point. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, there's lots you could do, and, and if you're making some good money, I mean, there's, you know, you, if you invest wisely and, and you could hire like a R and D departments and, and lots of different things. Absolutely. Right. And, and right. that's, I mean, our government, whenever we learn new things, we should give this technology to all businesses open source freely, like if it can help the market, don't you think? Wouldn't that be? Well, I think there's a lot of things. I think one of the things that should be frowned upon, uh, just to digress real quickly, I think one of the things that um, should be uh, frowned upon terribly is uh, is patent uh, sequestration. I, you know, when, yeah. when, so when something new comes out and the company goes out, and either buys the patent or... It wasn't or, or, the intent of the law. They intended the patent to be, you, you know, a certain length of time, and then people could start using it, not to keep adding on to it forever. You know? Right, right, right. So, uh, but, but let me finish. With the, uh, the cooperative thing, um, we've got, um, uh, as I said, about 30,000 worker-owned cooperatives uh, worker on cooperatives in the United States now. That number is growing uh, and with almost a million people um, in these cooperatives. And in October of... Well, I've seen uh, some clothing stores and stuff like that where it's like like that, you know, and it's all, you know, working wage and, yeah, living wage. That's right. Or, I believe Ace, Ace Hardware, I believe, is, uh, is a, a cooperative, uh, which is one of the better uh, known ones here. But um, there's, there's a ton of them. And um, in 2009, uh, Mondragon um, partnered with United Steelworkers in Ohio to create a, uh, uh, a worker-owned cooperative there. And just this past March, um, they came up with a, um, um, a sort of a, a modified uh, uh, cooperative uh, plan 
to to further promote uh, work around cooperatives in, in the United and, States. And what about things like Habitat for Humanity? I mean, that's not the same thing, but it's kind of, you know, in the same vein. I mean, I love that organization. I mean, you know, I think that's a great idea. Thomas, there is not a single industry that a worker-owned cooperative could not undertake to, to do. Um, the Mondragon's example, they have appliances, they have automotive, they have electronics, they have communications. I mean, so, it's, it's know, not something new either. I think, like, back in, you know, some, you know, centuries ago, people probably did stuff like that. Right. Well, um, you know, I, I, I think it's a... It's a um, it's a valid uh, but, but, what but, I call but make it as easy as possible for people to do that if they want to get the right here's okay so I I'm glad we're still on film it's it, it's because there's two things I wanted to bring up actually I forgot to bring something up um, and, and and you're probably you, you know I, I would guess you might not agree with this but it's something I think to consider so I do agree with you on like the public option and and stuff like that um, but uh, or Medicare option for for all like if you want to buy into it a, you know a public option but like um, but I think what would be revolutionary and and I, I wish more people um, would consider it is like um, and it's very libertarian it's very Gary Johnson it is the fair tax um, and, and imagine just having a sales tax completely getting rid of income tax Social Security Medicare just having it be that sales tax and um, uh, it, it's it's basically they could have vouchers for income levels. I think prices would end up adjusting after a couple of years, and then then there would be such a good foundation that um, you know everyone would be paying taxes. Um, businesses would we'd be the only country in the world that could say set up shop here. Um, we don't have any income taxes, and, and people could start businesses so much easier, and uh, they just wouldn't have to worry about that. It would be just like a value added or a sales tax. I mean, isn't that what you said? Actually, you did say that, right? So, um, so right. I I I, I uh, on my website, I I am um, a of value-added right. tax, and but I what I, I call it a scaled value-added tax. In that, for example, um, let's say that um, let's say that somebody wanted to buy a a washer dryer, and if you if you bought a stripped-down version of a washer dryer with without a lot of bells and whistles, I believe that that person should should pay a, a lower a lower tax amount on some somebody that that paid. Um, sort of the Cadillac of a washer dryer, um, you know, s sort of a more luxurious model. And, w and what that does is it, it protects um, it protects those that that um, are in a tighter spot financially. Uh, so again, I call it a scaled value added tax. It, yeah, it but you know what? You could say that might help companies like Walmart instead of people that are you, you know making a wage too, right? Well, um, you know. <laughs> I don't, we, don't, we talk about Walmart, then we got to start, start talking about... Um, well, I'm just saying, uh, no, the open ideas is the most important yeah. thing, having the debates, right. you know. I, right. I mean, right. I, I agree with you. I think the sales tax, there there's different ways to, to make it work out, you know, but right. I think it's a much simpler system, and, and, and then there would be ways to work it out, so I'm, I'm sure, and, and, and that way you don't have to worry about filling out any forms or nothing. You just, it's, it's a sales tax, and... Um, right. Uh, and, and everyone would pay equally, you know, um, and, or everyone would pay their fair share at least, you know, and, and it would be good for imports and exports. And, um, and now about the uh, cooperatives, though, I did have a thought on that, is the thought isn't really on that, but it's similar to that because, um, because I'm thinking, like, that if everyone's always work, um, w concerned about wages and, 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 and increasing wages and, and having a better, um, y you know, pr purchasing power of the dollar, which is important, I mean, compared to other countries, I suppose, but um, uh, we're, here's one thing we're missing, I think, in the conversation is um, expenses. Um, it's like, what are people's main expenses? It's, it's either rent or mortgage, it's energy, it's utilities, um, you know, it could be uh, healthcare or education, and, um, and those, um, and, and I guess food, I mean, but, but food not really, you know, if you didn't, ha if those weren't as bad, I mean, so maybe, you, you know, there, there might not be a complete way, like maybe we, we're, we just need to completely think out of the box and think of ways where we could eventually get energy for a lot cheaper and um, and eliminate that as part of you, you, you know and try to um, have some kind of 
you know, treasury loan program or something like that where um, people could or people could more easily build on their own land or, or stuff like that. So, I mean, we're, instead of focusing all all the time, which it's good to have a better uh, earning uh, potential, but at the same time, I mean, there's could be lots of things um, that could reduce some um, those necessary expenses as well and i'm not talking about in some kind of communistic you, you know living in some kind of projects way i just mean that um uh, there's just different building methods and, and things like that and, and regulations that could be cut out a little bit where I, I mean people wouldn't be in debt the rest of their lives and uh, and so we could cut expenses just as much um and, but still get the value out of it just for uh using less money just working right. smarter, not harder, I guess. Exactly, and, and, you, and you're exactly right. Uh, thinking out of the box is what's been missing, um, and it's missing because um, uh, you've got uh, stagnant th thinkers uh, in Washington, the same people year in, year out, uh, many of them coming from a very narrow uh, perspective. Um, one of the things, uh, if you've been to my website, you may, you may have seen... Um, um, uh, a drawing, it's actually um, uh, uh, a drawing that my son did uh, based on a sketch that I provided him of vehicles going down the highway and, and one of the lanes says charging lane. And what that is, uh, it represents dynamic charging of an electric vehicle as it's being driven. And uh, along the side of the highway you see that it's lined with solar panels. And so that, you know, that, that talks a little bit about what you're talking about. You know, if we, if we can alleviate um, well, you know, we could have um, uh, uh, paid for solar for every household. I mean, there's like 350 million people in the country, but there's about a hundred and something million houses. Um, we've we're 16 trillion dollars in debt. Would it costed about six trillion dollars to give everyone in this whole country solar? And, right. and that would have paid for itself, I believe. Imagine everyone having like um, an extra uh, thousand or plus dollars uh, each household having a thousand plus dollars um every year to spend year after year after year after year and the jobs that um would have gone right back into the economy by creating all those solar panels and installing them and stuff like that and in addition to you you wouldn't have the pressure that the that uh, the neocons have to yeah, and it would running r r running around the world trying to yeah, protect oil fields yeah we would have saved a lot of money from going to war a lot of lives um uh, you, you know psychological um damage as as well as um, uh, we would have reduced the demand for oil which would have lowered grocery prices Absolutely. so um, you know the uh, let me just see where so the, the no, stuff like that is not getting um, talked about, debated, um, you, you know, introduced too much. I mean, we have like one or two, like you mentioned, one or two independents out of like 500 something people, if you include the House and the Senate. And, um, I'd, you know, I think we, it's time to have some more, like maybe about 50 more. But now, what were, did you have, um, I'm looking at the issues here. I mean, it says here you're for energy independence, uh, strong labor. Unions make for a strong America. Um, uh, college and technical training, a, a right. Um, reduce the country's 23% uh, illiteracy rates. I mean, that will go a very long way right there. Um, and um, uh, single-payer health care, we went over that. Full legalization of marijuana, including taxation and promoting it. Ending the drug war, we spent, you know, billion, hundreds of billions probably like one or two trillion in that over the last couple of decades and uh and, and and like you said we have the most amount of people in prison in fact i mean if the presidents um uh, got caught for the things that they admitted they did they wouldn't even be allowed to be president nowadays and yet um, it, to me i don't see it as much as the, the i see it as so much more as a hypocritical thing um for how could someone have done something and, and, and tolerate and even you, you know demand the orders of other people i mean you would have to lock up let's you know like 45 percent of the whole population and um right. so the fair tax i mean this is all like all right, all right so this is like um you, you know you could have scott brown <laughs> you could have elizabeth warren um or you, you know you could have like uh uh, just um, you know, huge um, uh, re reform here, um, and um, you know, inside. Uh, well, let, let me just touch on a few issues here too that are, aren't there. Um, back in 2003, Warren Buffett 
um, suggested the uh, the uh, the use of import certificates to help balance our tremendous trade deficit. Um, that was uh, 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 quite some time ago, and yet you know, nothing was done on that. And is that uh, an import tax, or what is that? It's it's essentially. So I think I think a, we do have import taxes, but I think we should, anyways. Yeah. Well, this is an import certificate. What it what what it was? Uh, it was actually a vehicle where people could actually um, vendors here in the states would uh, sell these certificates. And basically, you could only sell to the United States if you had a matching certificate. So it was a it, it, it immediately created a balance of trade because each certificate was equivalent to the, its value in in um, in services or products I, 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 coming I coming I've into heard the country. Similar on that, actually, it's, it's, yeah, some other people. Um, and it, here's the only I think if it's a commodity like something we couldn't grow here or or produce here like some um, exotic fruits and vegetables or plants or, or uh, materials, those shouldn't be taxed. But everything else that's like man-made, those all should be taxed. Because um, right. we need right. our materials and, 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 and ingredients and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I imagine just, um, uh, I mean, just the, the, the psychology of, uh, you, you know, someone putting things in our favor. And I'll say this also, here's another point to mention. You're running against a Republican and a Democrat, um, and, and you know she's probably not the worst Democrat. But I don't hear these like you know t type of um, founding father type you know revolutionary type um, you know peaceful revolutionary type of uh, 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 ideas here or ideals ideas. Um, and um, so if you're, you know, an independent, which I know you're out there because that's the biggest voting block, or if you're just a disgruntled Republican and Democrat and you want to send a message to Washington, I mean, that's what I, do, I can't think of anything else. I mean, we could boycott Exxon or Shell or something, or we could vote in, um, I mean, uh, as many independent and third party candidates as possible. Um, it's it's doable. Um, if you're a libertarian, I mean, this guy's for the uh, fair tax. Um, if you're Green parties for like a public option. I, I mean, so I mean, it, it's 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 you got it covered. I think, and and you have the right uh, spirit. So I mean, what other choice? Did they they only have the Republican, the Democrats, you. And this other person, um, uh, I was, I, I'm not aware of another person in Massachusetts. Yeah, I think, um, well, they, they were, um, let's see, um, I think they were, it's, it's, they, they, they were actually with the socialist workers right in, um, they were, it says here communist political organizer, but I, I, I just, I don't want to say that about anyone. I don't want to be like one of those, uh, you, 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 you know, but, um, so yeah, it's, uh, so it's, um, so I mean it's yeah Laura Garza but um but I mean um I mean from everything I've heard here I mean I'm I feel uh yeah you would definitely be the best choice um I think um and um I mean definitely a very good choice a better choice I I uh, you know I guess I haven't talked to Laura but um but uh, I mean this sounds really good it sounds like all the things that people um you, you know they kind of keep they keep getting you, you know the bad things from the republicans and the democrats instead of you know what's supposed to be the good things and uh so four more years from now i mean you know i can just imagine maybe we would have if things stay the same you know five a two percent congressional approval rating or we can you know uh, do what we're supposed to do and 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 you know like ralph nader be a a, a wise consumer um you know people uh call in to the radio shows and stuff like that and argue about football teams but i mean this has to do with life and death and i this is what our country you know makes our earth uh, uh spin that's right and uh well i i i think yeah it's it's so hopefully i i feel something this year if if there ever was a year so far that's um this scenario could be possible where there is a wave of 50 percent i think massachusetts would be a great place to do it so i can see bill um 
you, you know, on C-SPAN or, or whatever, you, you, you know, and uh, championing these ideas. Um, and uh, so, um, well, hopefully um, you'll be in the debates. Hopefully that uh, you'll, uh, uh, y y y you know, be up to challenging them for that. If they don't want to take that, that's their own um, faults. But uh, it's it's not going to be anything new. I mean, it's just like we're paying for this Democrat and Republican national convention. I mean, we all know who's the winners, right? I, I mean, um, and so we're going to spend a hundred. Uh, I think it's $100 million on security and $18 million for each, uh, uh, you know, party that they're having. And um, it, 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 it really shows they are taking us for granted. And, um, uh, it, and uh, you, you know, it's, it's, we, there is something to be said now. Uh, and um, so, and, and this is it. But... Uh, uh, Bill, I, I guess that's about it. I, I, I mean, um, I, for for tonight, um, for right now. And Again, I, I, I appreciate uh, all your time and attention, Thomas, and um, and um, hopefully, uh, hopefully the uh, the voters get the word in time uh, to to take action. And um, I'm uh, they can reach me through the website, um, as you said before, uh, BillSimbrello.com, or um, uh, they can reach me on Twitter. Um, and they can um, uh, they ask can me invite questions. you to yeah I mean I, I mean maybe have some um, town halls or, or something like that if someone has an organization um, or they're an event coordinator or something and uh, you know what would be fun on a Saturday night or, or something like that would be um, you know uh, having a, a, a some snacks or whatever and and, and asking uh, you, you know um, some questions about our uh, congressional representation uh, something that is um, I guess uh, you know freedom really isn't free you, you, you know so uh, well uh, Bill um, I guess I will just wrap it up but um, uh, thank you um, for you know your time today and, and for taking the challenge here uh, while um, you know so people do have an option not to have to select uh, Republican and, and Democrats um, uh, this year, and I, I hope you have a good night. And so I will keep in touch. And um, again, I'll say goodbye to you after this interview ends here. And um, uh, Godspeed and beyond. Thank, thank you again, and thank you to your listeners.